You know, Steve talked a little bit about uh, how accomplishments translate into rewards. Uh, what I mean is he talked a little bit about uh, the budgeting issues that we face. And I just want to start by connecting back to his presentation. When I spend time with stakeholders, whether they're elected officials or others, the stories I'm telling are not my stories, they're your stories. And they are powerful stories. Uh, the things that, that we highlighted here are just a sample of the kind of work that we do. But the important issue is that you are having an impact on everyday lives. You are changing the lives of others. And that is some, that's a story that is easy to tell. It's easy on the ears of the listeners. They, it resonates with them. When Steve and Keith spend time actually in the local districts of elected officials, we bring in people that you've worked with, that our extension educators have worked with, to tell the stories of how what we do as a college actually make a difference for them every day. And those are incredibly important and powerful stories. I don't like to go to uh, the, the legislators and say, you know, times are tough, our costs are going up, we really need your help in providing more money. I want to go and say, here's what we're going to do with your investment. Here's what we did with the last investment you made. Here are the accomplishments we made. This is what we're going to focus on. And here's what we aspire to achieve. And that is a very, very well-received message. But it only works because you all deliver. You deliver new ideas. And we get it out to work in our communities, in our industries, in society. That's a, my hat is off to you because you are the heart of what makes this enterprise run. You are the reason that I can tell these stories. And any success we have as a college any success I have in my role as a leader really comes right back to your success as individuals and teams. And so my thanks to you for, for helping to make the job easier. I want to focus on three things this morning. Uh, I'm going to focus on the President's investiture speech. Uh, some of you may have seen that live or watched it while it streamed. Some of you may have gone back and looked at the archive version or even seen uh, the press releases that are starting to come out. I want to talk a little bit about facilities because part of enabling your success is to have modern facilities that allow you to succeed. And I want to talk a little bit about the discovery themes. That's been a constant theme over the past couple of years. Uh, I've been with you two and a half years now and uh, you know this has been part and parcel of my daily life and I want to share a little bit about where we are. Before I turn to those very research-related issues, let me just say one word about uh, the other part of our college, and that's our students. Uh, tonight, we actually will be at the Ohio Union celebrating the success of our students. Uh, it's a great event. It's something the students themselves put together. We'll do a lot of recognition of, of student organizations, of individual student success, uh, teams of students, et cetera. Uh, we're leading up, of course, to commencement exercises here in a few weeks. Uh, it's just, you know, this is the time of year when we're beset by student activities and switching from quarters to semesters has just seemed to concentrate it down into an even tighter, tighter array. Why do I talk to you about students? Well, you know, tomorrow this building is going to be filled with high school students, the next generation of you. And they're here as part of the Ohio Youth Institute. The Ohio Youth Institute is our Ohio component of the World Food Prize activities. Uh, very few states do this, but we are one of the states that actually hosts an event for high school students. They're going to come in and make presentations, be judged. Some of those young people will be selected to go to Des Moines next fall for the World Food Prize uh, activity. They all will engage in a variety of activities through the afternoon. Interestingly enough, some of those will be water and energy related activities, uh, sort of congruent with today's theme. But my point is that we need to help the next generation understand that their aspiration should be to be one of you. I mentioned commencement, and when we get together in early May, 
Less than half of the students who shake my hand receiving their diploma will have been freshmen in our college. Less than half of the students who graduate from our college were freshmen in our college. Why do they end up with a diploma from our college? Because of you. They come to college not entirely sure what they're going to do, and they meet you. They meet you in the classroom. They meet you in the hallway of buildings and labs. They come and work in your labs and do undergraduate research. They're motivated by what you tell them you just discovered that morning when you're in class in the afternoon. You are change agents. You convince people to come into what I consider to be the most fundamental of sciences, and that is how we provide food for the world and are respectful of our natural resources. And so when we talk about student success, just as when we talk about things like how we get more money in the budget, take some measure of pride that it's because of you. Those connections are really, really powerful. Okay, enough of the student commercial. Um, President's investiture speech. So here we were nine, ten months into Michael Drake's uh, uh, term as president. Uh, there is a history of Ohio State having these investiture ceremonies. Uh, the, the real eyes were on what is he going to emphasize? What's he going to talk about? Well, he talked about three major initiatives. He talked about access to education. If you've been paying any attention whatsoever to the media, you know that the entire conversation these days is about affordability of higher education. And so that's a very natural thing. This is something that's very important. How do we actually get young people through college? The second thing he talked about was diversity and inclusion. This is an incredibly important part of what we do. It is fundamental to our success. Think about the disciplines represented in this room. You know, we've got a leg up on this notion of diversity and inclusion because we're a college built of so many different disciplines. Everything from education to economics, botany to zoology, plants to animals, engineering, physical sciences, we do all of these things. And so there's a measure of diversity in that. Look around the room. We're a discipline that draws from many different countries and regions of the world. There's a diversity to that that we need to be proud of. We need to continue to work, particularly in our professoriate, with ensuring that we have other measures of diversity, that we have gender representation that's equivalent to what the real world looks like that our race and ethnicity balance begins to look like the rest of the world, that we're respectful of sexual orientation and other sorts of diversity elements because at the end of the day, our success as a college is in fact dependent upon embracing this diversity. The ideas that we bring together because of this diversity, we do not succeed in today's world without these. We simply do not succeed. And so we will continue to influence, uh, to put importance on that. We actually, in the discovery theme process, have a requirement for search committees to have training in diversity elements in the search process. No college on this campus has sent more people through that program than the College of Food, Agriculture, and Environmental Sciences. In fact, some departments are sending their entire department faculty through that training program. And so again, uh, my hat is off to you. This is the right thing to do, and it will help us really find the candidates that we want to have in place on our faculty for the future. So the President's focus on diversity and inclusion is again something very much in line with what I think a critical priority for this college to be. It has to be. The third element of his investiture speech, the only, the only element that focused on a program was food insecurity. And so he stood there in front of the Board of Trustees, in front of all of the colleges and academic units on campus, in front of all of our faculty, staff, students, our stakeholders, elected officials, and he said 
Ohio State will do what we do. He opened the door for this college, folks, to take leadership for Ohio State's priority over the next decade. That's a, that's a door we have to walk through. We absolutely have to walk through that. He talked about the fact that Ohio State is committed to a $100 million investment in the issues of food security. That is a real number. When you look at the faculty who have already committed here on campus to joining efforts in food security issues, and you add in the faculty that will come to us through the discovery theme process focused in this area, the next decade we'll see nearly a $100 million investment by The Ohio State University in issues of food security. And the leadership of that is us. It is the entire campus that we have the subject matter and the will to take leadership of this. And that's something that we have to align with our own priorities. So that investiture speech really enables us. You know, the president has laid out three broad areas, all of which are very much part of us, and we have to take full advantage. Now, let me jump to the discovery theme concept. You've heard about this for years. Even the grad students in the room have heard about this for years. Well, it's become reality. We have turned three broad areas, health and wellness, energy and environment, food production and security, into seven different specific areas of hiring. The initial area was data analytics, big data, something that is critically important here in this college. But we have two endeavors in materials, one in the materials themselves, materials for, for a green future, the other in the sustainability around the materials system. We have two focus areas in health and wellness, chronic brain energy, in, injury, and uh, emerging and re-emerging diseases. We also have two investment areas in food production and security. One in metabolomics, linking what we eat to our health outcomes, and the other in creating a, a climate resilient food system. Seven areas of investment. This college is actively involved in six of those seven, and we lead three of those. And so we have taken a hand in really directing the trajectory of the university. We currently have 15 searches underway or about to begin in the college. Steve showed you a list of new faculty faces over the past several, year, or several months. We actually have um, a number of searches still in progress. Uh, we continue to fill positions that become vacant through retirements, through people leaving. So we have not, one of the questions that had come up initially in the discovery themes is whether we would shift our focus to only hiring people through these discovery theme mechanisms. We continue to hire people back into the core capacity of our academic units. And we have the ability now to augment these key areas and be leaders across the university through our investments in new faculty. As I've now come to know this college a little bit better, uh, it's my opinion that based on our starting point of a couple years ago, my first snapshot of the college, that a college of this stature and aspiration should probably have about 20% more faculty in the academic departments than we, than we have started with. And the discovery themes actually are going to move us to that point. If we continue that balance of hiring to our core capacities and that's not the historical core, that's the evolving core, the new disciplines that you bring in. But couple that with hiring faculty into the discovery themes and these focus areas will achieve that goal. And you'll see what Steve was referring to in terms of things like our extramural grants and contracts. You'll see it reflected in our graduate education portfolio and the opportunities to train additional students in these emerging disciplines. It truly is uh, an exciting time. And we're seeing discovery theme hires in all disciplines. 
uh, RNA viruses in our food animal health research program, uh, looking at uh, disease, plant disease models in plant pathology, uh, looking at the social science of sustainability, uh, precision agriculture. A couple of those hires are focused on water. So even though these are focus areas, they also uh, align very, very well with the breadth of what this college is all about. So truly some exciting opportunities. To do this, okay, I just, did I just say 20% more faculty? How many of you have extra room next to you? <laughs> I don't see any hands going up, not willingly at least. Okay, uh, this is what I thought. So facilities is a really big issue. Uh, and we've, we're working on that. If you haven't been paying close attention, uh, on our website, there is a facilities master plan now available. Uh, two years ago, when I spoke to you, we were still talking about our move across the river here on the Columbus campus. Uh, the St. John site still looks like a basketball arena to me, uh, and it will for some time, I suspect. But what we were able to accomplish in our master planning process was to look at the full breadth of facilities that helped to fuel this college. Uh, and we manage in excess of 300 facilities. Fully a third of the university's facilities lie within our college's management. And many of those really struggle in terms of their condition. And so this master planning process is long overdue. We did not choose paint chips and carpet swatches. So when you look at that master plan, it's a concept. It is designed to make us think about what we will need. And what we will need is facilities for the future. We've had some small projects that have taken place. If you have not yet been in the new Stur Student Success Center and library over in Ag Admin, please make an effort to get in there. Incredible space and populated by students. And you now can buy coffee and carry it in with you. Uh, really wonderful space there. Uh, the the process of renovating Cotman so that it is warm in the winter and cool in the summer rather than vice versa <laughs> uh, is well underway. Uh, not complete yet, but even there, a part of the money has now been set aside to renovate the, the lobby of Cotman, which is another student gathering space. We're thinking about how we can deal with Plum Hall. Just to give you an idea, I mean, I heard the silent boos and hisses when Steve showed you both the direct expenses and the F&A. And it's not been that long since I was a faculty member and hated that indirect cost stuff. But let me just give you a couple of numbers to, to keep you thinking about some things. The space that you populate costs this college $40 million a year. Plum Hall which was condemned when I was a student here in the 1970s. <laughs> Plum Hall costs us a quarter million dollars a year to live in. And so when we think about, you know, if we're going to spend that kind of money, why aren't we spending it on absolutely the best possible space to do our jobs, to, to discover new ideas and to teach new students? And so we're really using the master plan to look comprehensively at what that ought to look like. We're lining up projects. We, we, we paired the master planning process with a, a livestock and animal care plan. We've looked at ATI and their teaching mission and how we can bring that all together. We're looking at this holistically, folks, and we're looking at it from the perspective of all the locations we occupy. And so as we move into the next few years, you know, we will likely not be in buildings across the, the river. But we should be part of conversations about those buildings because that connects us with the academic heart of the campus. We need to embrace the fact that we have two campus locations and it's absolutely critical for us to maintain the quality of both. We need to embrace the fact that our research and teaching missions, whether it's in the classroom or through outreach in cooperative extension, are inextricably linked that these things are joined at the hip. And so the spaces we build have to accommodate not us, but the people that follow us. You look at the, at the new engineering building up on the Worcester campus, and it is designed, look at the laboratories. 
they're not designed for today, they're designed for tomorrow because tomorrow we don't know what those researchers will need. And so we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared. Part of the conversation that we're having about facilities is actually what we do with a re-envisioned Waterman Farm and that ties beautifully into our food security mandate from the President and the fact that we have the opportunity to really become a power. You know, in fact, with the Discovery Theme hires, within the next three years, the Ohio State University will have the largest collection of faculty, not just in the world, but in history of people addressing issues of food security. And it will be incumbent upon us to reap the benefits of that kind of investment. And so we think about how we use the campus as a laboratory, how we use our campuses as a laboratory, how we use the city as a laboratory to create solutions that are scalable and transportable and can really address this, this worldwide. We're honored today that uh, Ambassador Tony Hall is with us. He's actually here by mistake today. I think his real job is tomorrow. But he's here to, to address those young people, that next generation. But I had a chance to talk to the ambassador a bit this morning. You know, and he is, um, since leaving Congress in his ambassador role, uh, he's very uh, involved with the Alliance to End Hunger. And that group, we felt like we were talking in the mirror as we talked back and forth because we're so much on the same page with the kind of things that we can achieve uh, if we really put the, the assets we have in place. Part of that will be not just a re-envisioned faculty, a re-envisioned student base, but also re-envisioned facilities to really create a test bed for how we address issues of hunger. Well, just uh, quickly, I know your break is calling you uh, biologically in one way or another, but the fact is that uh, I, I, we are focusing today on water, and I've left water more or less intentionally out of my remarks, but but I want to just say a, a, a thing or two in conclusion about uh, our water initiatives. You'll hear from other speakers uh, throughout the day. Jay Martin will be speaking a little later on our uh, field to faucet initiative and how it fits into larger uh, in initiatives on campus, the global water in initiative and, and so forth. But uh, let me just make a statement or two. I, I've been talking about water for a long time. You know, I've been doing this gig for about 15 years and uh, have talked about water for most of that time. And I used to start those conversations trying to get people's attention by saying water is the next generation's oil. I have abandoned that statement. Water is our oil. It is this generation's oil. When we talk about food security, we have to have water security first or there is no food. You know, the New York Times has been running a, a series of, of articles about this, the situation in California. You know, go anywhere in the world and you're facing issues of water availability. I've said in the past that uh, in North America, it's largely uh, if you're west of the Mississippi, the question is how much. If you're east of the Mississippi, the question is how good. And I think actually those two questions are running together as time passes. Uh, last summer, the water turned off in Toledo for two days. Unimaginable. And if you're a, a young family with, with kids and you wake up on a Saturday morning to news that you can't run them a glass of water, that you shouldn't rinse their vegetables, that you maybe don't want to give them a bath, the kids loved it, but the parents were understandably concerned. You know, how can this be? Water always comes from the tap. It always does, just like food is always in the grocery and the restaurant menu always has, you know, think of the times the, the server has said, we're out of that. Not very often. It happens, but the majority of stuff on the menu is always there. And water is even more always there. And it wasn't. So that young couple maybe could be justified in saying, fix this now. Fix it now. Well, in this room, most of us know that now is not a possible time frame for fixing water quality and the things we faced in Lake Erie. But the fact is that 
we do need to turn our attention to near-term solutions. And so, as you'll hear from Jay, the Field to Fawcett Initiative really focused on seizing that moment, focusing in Lake, on Lake Erie, and bringing together faculty from across campus. I sent money to other colleges. Yes, I did, folks. I sent our hard-earned money to the College of Engineering, to the College of Public Health. I sent some of our money to Heidelberg because what we're doing is building partnerships among the best science. What I'm doing with my investment is mirroring what you do. You find the best possible collaborators to achieve your goals, and that's how you build your projects. And that's what we're doing to try to solve these problems. But more on that a little bit later. Just remember that while that focus has been on harmful algal blooms in Lake Erie, that's not the full story. About a third of our farmland worries about how much phosphorus goes on the field and comes off. The remaining two-thirds is a lot more worried about how much nitrogen goes on and comes off because they're in the Ohio River drainage. And the problem there is what happens when nutrients get into seawater in the Gulf of Mexico. And so we've got a lot of complexity to the problems we face, and it's going to require a lot of creativity in the solutions that we bring to bear. And so I think we're up to the task, but we're going to have to continue our focus. Now, those of you who watch too many movies, old movies late at night are gonna say I stole this from the Goonies, and maybe I did. All time classic movie. But folks, this is our time. This is our time. All of the stars have aligned. Society needs the knowledge that we produce. They absolutely clamor for the graduates that we provide. The university has defined as its investment priorities things that are exactly what we do. The president has put an exclamation point behind that investment strategy by saying, our focus will be on something that is us. This is our time. And so as you sit and listen today, as you look at those posters, as you think about what colleagues you're going to bring in through new hires, as you create your own research future, never lose sight of the fact that we're in the driver's seat. The world is looking to us. It's on our shoulders to solve these problems. And we couldn't be at a better place than the Ohio State University to accomplish that. Have a great day.